In MathCAD, you can solve differential equations, which are equations that have functions with derivatives. In another video, I analyzed a mass spring damper system in Creole Parametric using the mechanism dynamics option, and a mass spring damper system is an example of differential equations. I'm going to do the same analysis, but in MathCAD in order to generate the result that you see on the screen. So let's start off. I'm going to create a brand new worksheet for this. And let me start off by defining some of my different variables. Okay, so it is a mass spring damper system. So let's define our mass. And in that video, I had a block that was just a kilogram, one times kg. And then let's take care of our spring. I'll use K for the spring constant, and I used a value of 0 0.05 times newtons per millimeter. And now for our damper, our damping coefficient was a value of 0 0.001, and that was in newton seconds per millimeter. So, newton seconds, and let's use the space bar to highlight the entire units and then divide by millimeters. And so there are some of our variables for the system. For the force in that video, I used a value of 10 newtons, but I'm going to use a function in this case, f as a function of t, and this is going to be equal to 10 newtons. And you'll see that t does not appear in the function definition, but that is okay. And lastly, I ran the analysis for a total of eight seconds. I'm gonna create a variable called duration that is going to be equal to eight times seconds. So now I've got all my different variables set up. The way that you solve a differential equation in MathCAD is with the solve block construct. So let me scroll up a little bit. And then here we have the solve block. And it has three different sections, but for a differential equation, you don't have to enter in any guess values. Let's go to the constraint section. And now I'm going to write my equation that governs this system. And so we have mass times uh, the second derivative of position. So that is the acceleration, of course. But for the derivative operator, I'll go to the operators dropdown. And here we have DDX. You can see that the keyboard shortcut is Control Shift D. So let me click on it. And this is going to be T down at the bottom. And I'm going to use my right arrow key in order to move to the little placeholder so I can enter in two for the second derivative. And you can see that it automatically places a two at the top as well. And then this is going to be the second derivative of position, which I'll use the variable X as a function of T. All right, so mass times acceleration, and then the next term in our equation, let's use the plus sign and we'll put in our damping effect. So that is going to be our damping coefficient C, and then that's going to be times, let me go back to the operators and get my DDX, and this is going to be DDT, and then let me use the right arrow to enter an X as a function of T. And now let's put in our spring effect. So let's do plus and then K, times x as a function of t. And all of this is going to be set equal to our force. And when you are defining your constraints for writing this equation, you're not going to use the definition operator or the evaluation operator. You are going to use the special equal sign that is the comparison operator. It's sort of like the thick looking equal sign. You can see that the keyboard shortcut is control and the equals key. And so our mass times acceleration plus our damping times velocity 
plus our spring times displacement. This is going to be equal to our force, which I defined as F as a function of T. So that is good. That is our equation that we're going to use first. I'm going to show you that there is an alternate way that you can write this using what's called prime notation. Let me copy a bunch of my variables so I have them available to use on another sheet. I just did control C in order to copy them. Let's create a, another worksheet and then I'll use control V in order to paste them. And so the alternate way that you can write your equation, let's put in a, another solve block and then let's go to our constraints down here. And so just want to check the name of my variables. Uh, let's do mass. And this is going to be equal to the second derivative of position. So I'll put in the X. The other way that you can write the equation, let's go to our operators. And if you take a look down in the calculus section, right below DDX, we have the prime operator. Keyboard shortcut is control with the little, I don't know what you call that character. Is it a carrot or something? No, it's not a carrot. I don't know. That little dash the I don't know whatever it is let's use this and if we want the second derivative you're just going to immediately enter in a, another prime operator and then let's put in our t value so mass times the second derivative of the position plus c times x and once again, let's go to our operator and then use the prime operator and that times T plus K times X of T. And this is going to be control equals F as a function of T. So that's the other way that you can write your constraint equation using the prime operator instead of the derivative operator. But let me go back to my previous worksheet and I need to add in a couple more constraints for the initial conditions. And one thing that you want to be aware of is that when you're writing the initial conditions, you must use prime notation if you are going to define uh, any of the derivatives of your variable. So for example, let's see, do our position at time zero. So X as a function of zero seconds, this is going to be equal to control equals. I'm going to have that equal to zero millimeters. And then let's do our next one. This one is going to be X. And so for our initial velocity is going to be zero. So let me go to my operators and let's grab the prime operator X prime at time zero seconds. This is going to be control equals zero millimeters per second. So that is good. So now I have all of my constraints established. Let me see if I can drag this and move the sections a little bit apart from each other. And now in order to solve the differential equation, we are going to use a special function, ODE solve. ODE, that stands for Ordinary Differential Equation, which is a differential equation with a single independent variable, which is what we have in this particular situation. Our independent variable is the time t. So let's write our equation. So this is going to be x. x is going to be equal to, and I'm using the definition operator. I use the keyboard shortcut of the colon key. Let's go to the functions tab. We have about 12 different basic groups of functions up at the top. And here we have differential equations. You can see that we have, I don't know what, about 17 different choices from here, but this is the one that we want to use, ODE solve, and that will return a function or vector functions representing the solution to a system of ordinary differential equations. And so, oops, let me go back over here. You can see from the tooltip that there are three different values that you're going to pass into here. One of them is optional. And so let's click on it. And the first thing that we're going to pass to it is 
x as a function of the independent variable t. And then the next one is going to be the duration that we want to solve this over. And I created a variable called duration. The third one allows you to specify sort of like the, uh, the intervals that you want to use, but I'm not going to do that. So I'm just going to use the backspace in order to get rid of it. And now I can click outside of the solve block. And that's all that you have to do in order to set this up. So there are a few different ways that we can evaluate the results of our differential equation. Let me scroll down. One way is just to evaluate at a particular location over your range. So for example, let's find our position and then at say five seconds, I'll do five times S and then just use the equals key, the equals operator. And there we have our value in millimeter, or excuse me, meters. If I want to express it in millimeters, I can just change the value that is in there for the unit. All right, the second way that we can evaluate it, let me scroll down and go to another sheet. You could use a range variable in order to analyze it. So let's create a range variable. And for lack of originality, I'm going to call it range. And we'll do it from zero. And let's do it. I'm initially going to do it every second. Let me do one second. Oops, I forgot to put in my second here. So let me edit that. Zero second using an interval of every one second. And up to our duration. So that is good. And then we can evaluate our position or velocity or acceleration uh, at the values in our range variable. So x as a function of range, this is going to be, oops, not e I did control equals, uh, or excuse me, I did the definition operator. I meant to do the evaluation operator. And so here we have the different values. And just like before, I can change the unit that I want these reported in. So there you can see the different values, but probably the best way to evaluate this in my humble opinion is by using the chart component. So let's go down over here. And uh, before I actually put in my chart component, I'm going to change this. So we're evaluating over a much tighter range. Let's do every hundredth of a second. And as soon as I click outside, it's going to update the values in the evaluation of the position over the range. But let's go to the math tab and I'm going to throw in my chart component, insert chart component. And the first thing that I'm going to enter here, let's insert our x axis expression. And x, this is going to be equal to our range variable, x1 range. And I'm actually going to plot both the position and the acceleration. So I'm going to have two different y values. And since I want to use the same x value for both, I'm just going to get rid of that subscript one in there. All right, now let's enter in our y axis expression. And for the y axis expression, let's evaluate our position, which is going to be x as a function of range. So that is good. And let's position over here. And already you can see the results that we're generating. And right now it's giving the value in meters. Let's say I want this to be in millimeters. I'll just go back to my Y expression and then use the forward slash, which is same as dividing. And then you can divide by the actual units that you want this to be expressed in. And then it's going to update the axis accordingly. And let's put in our other y axis expression. Let's do y2 is going to be x. And then I'll use my prime operator. And then let's do range. And let me select everything and then use the forward slash to divide. And I want my velocity, my first derivative of position, to be in millimeters per second. So I will divide the y-axis expression by that. And there we have our graphs. And let me just make it a little bit wider to begin with. Let's position it over here. And now I want to edit this because 
you can see that by having the velocity and the position on the same axis just gives I don't know, kind of not good looking results. So let's double click on the chart component to get into editing mode. Let me zoom in a little bit so I can see it bigger. And let's start making some changes. If I go to the axes tab, here we can add in a second Y axis. And then I can say that, let's see, let's go to trace two. And I'm just going to be jumping around over here, making adjustments as I want. Let's make this red. Let's go to setup and for setup, I want this to use that second Y axis. And then for the name, I know I want to show a legend. So let's call this velocity. All right. So now let's start configuring our different tabs over here. So let's see, uh, let's go to the Y2 tab. And right now it's going over a certain range. Let me go to the setup tab. I'm going to use a user defined range. Let's go from negative 1250 to 1500. And let's see, I think I want to do 11 intervals should be good. And let's change the number formatting. I like decimal. That looks a lot prettier to me. Let's go to the title tab and let's put in a title for the Y2 axis, and this will be velocity, and this will be in millimeters per second. So that is good. Uh, let me go to the chart formatting. And so for the chart formatting itself, I want to put in a chart legend. Let's put it up at the top, and I want to have a single column. And I can see that, okay, let's see, my, my blue value is sort of hitting the peak over here. I do not like that. So now let's go to the formatting for the first trace because I want to change the name of it. Let's change this to position. Again, I'm just sort of doing things in whatever order that I want. Let's go to the primary Y axis and let's go to the setup and user defined range. Let's have this go from zero to 400. And I'm only going to do four intervals. And let's go back to the styles tab. And which one am I looking for? I want to put in some minor tick marks. There we are. Minor tick marks in there. I think that looks nice. Uh, let's see. What do I want to adjust next? Oh, I want to put a title on here. Let's go to the chart formatting tab and go to title and put in a chart title. And I want it to be above the graph. And this is going to be my mass spring damper system. And let's see, the last thing I think I need to format in here for how I want things to look. Let's go to the X axis and the setup. And we'll go from zero to eight. And I only want eight intervals, but I do like it to appear with like, you know, point zero on the end. So let's go to one decimal place and trailing zeros and there i mean i think that just looks wonderful uh, i really like the chart component it really helps you make these publication ready charts that you can use and i'm happy with all the editing let's close out of the chart editor and let me collapse the arguments and let's grab it and make it a little bit taller and so that is how you can solve a differential equation and then evaluate the different results.